Good day, this is Christian Winterbach and today I would like to show you how to automatically activate site collections using a SharePoint list, a K2 workflow and the K2 for SharePoint app. First we need to go to the app catalog and then into the K2 for SharePoint app to make sure that uh, the app has been deployed to the site collection where you plan on having the list that will start the K2 workflow. In order to do that, we have to check the Manage App Deployments, make sure that the site has been deployed. Usually we also deploy the Manage Paths to All Paths. We also have to check if that site collection has been activated by going into Manage App Activations. And we can see it in the list. Now I will show you how to import the list template. So first we need to go to our site collection in question. Then we go to site settings and list templates. You can see I've already added the list template here. But for purposes of this demo, I'm going to delete this document and upload a new one. Just give it a name and a description. From here we go to site contents, add an app, scroll down, usually it's on the next page, and choose your uh, installed list template, automate activation list. Give it a name. And there we are. From here you can open the list and then we need to appify this list. We need to have the data which is required and in this case we also need a workflow. For purposes of this demo I'm just going to leave the name as automate activation list workflow but I will choose uh, when the following events occur and when an item was added. This means that when you add a new item to that list it will automatically kick off a new K2 workflow which should then activate that site collection. Let's get into building the workflow. So for this workflow, we're going to need three events. Four if you want to change the folio. The first event is a basic smart object method. I'm going to call this me method ensure site collection info. In the drop-down, I will browse to System, SharePoint 2013 integration. From here you should see the SharePoint integration helper methods smart object. If you're not able to see the smart object, then you're going to need to log in with an account that has administrator permissions. You can see I'm logged in as administrator. The method that we want to execute is the ensure site collection method. From here we will need to expand the context browser, expand the automate activation list reference. These are the references, uh, the columns from the site, from the list on the site. And for this one, we're going to need the target site URL. Drag and drop that into the field. This is a required field. For the output mappings, we do, no, do not need to map any outputs. That's it for the first step. The second step is another smart object method. This one I'm going to call 
activate site collection. Of course, you can give it a different name if you like. I will choose the same smart object that we had before, SharePoint integration helper methods. And the method is the activate site collection method. Please make sure you don't use the plural. This is for singular site collection only. You can see we have two required properties. The first property is the application site URL, which is this one. Drag that up, drag that into the field. The site URL is the target site URL, the one that we want to activate. So you can drag that into the field. For this step, we're going to need to add three more steps, more properties. The first one is the K2 server URL. We're also going to need the smartforms runtime URL. And we're going to need the management smart objects only Boolean field. For the K2 server URL, just drag and drop that into the property field. Smartforms runtime URL, same story here. For the management smart objects only field, you'll need to type in the words false. Scrolling down, we're going to need to map to variables. But before we do that, we first need to create the variable. So you can minimize this and you can click on add variable. I'm just going to call this result output. Then we select map to variables, add a new mapping, and we map this to the result uh, column in the list. From this drop down, we choose the variable that we just created, result output, and that's it for now. The last step is to update the list that you've just created with the result that came back from the smart object. To do that, we need to go back here and then into SharePoint, into lists. Uh, sorry, we need to go into list items. And then here it is the update list item uh, event. Drag and drop that into the canvas. You can just leave that as is. We can pick the list item from the drop down. It should be our list that we just created, automate activation list. The property that we want to update should be the result property. And I will drag and drop the result output variable into this property here so that the output should update the list column result with what our result was. And that's it. Make sure you attach lines between your events. You can add a stop method if you like, but it's not really required. It saves automatically. And I'm going to deploy the workflow. After the workflow was deployed, you might want to check the permissions for the workflow so that other users also have permissions to start this workflow. From here, we can go back to our list. Now we need to add a new item. Title is required, so I'm just going to call it SharePoint Site Collection 1. Now we're going to need the K2 application URL. For that, you can go back to the App Catalog site, open up the K2 for SharePoint app, and you'll see the URL. The first part of that would be the app application URL until here. Everything after K2 for SharePoint slash pages, that can be ignored. So I'm going to copy this, paste it into here, the next uh, property we need is the target site URL. 
So I'm going to go to my site collection one. You can see here that I've already created the site collection. You can either copy the URL from the um, central admin site or you can go directly to your site collection and copy it from the URL. You don't need everything after the name of the site collection. So slash layouts, that can be ignored. The K2 server URL is also easily obtainable. If you go to K2 designer, you can see the first part of that URL should be this K2 server URL. And then lastly, we're going to need the Smart Forms Runtime URL. That can easily be acquired from the K2 management site under your environment library. You can see that we have the Smart Forms Runtime URL. It's usually the Smart Forms Runtime SSL URL. If we edit this field, I'm just going to copy that value. Of course, all of these values can also be hard coded into the K2 workflow, but then the workflow will not be very dynamic. Um, but that is, of course, up to you. So the application URL, the K2 server URL, and the Smart Forms Runtime URL can be hard coded so that you only have the target site URL. The result field we can leave blank. And if we click on save, it should start a new instance of our K2 workflow. So let's go have a look under K2 management. If we go to the workflow server, check our workflows, we can see the portal automate activation list workflow and then the automate activation list workflow process. We can see that there is a process already started. It's currently running. If we refresh maybe a couple of times, we can see that it has disappeared. Looks like it has finished with no issues. If we go back to our list and refresh the page, scroll a bit to the right, notice that our result column shows success. If we now go to our site collection in question, go to site contents, you should see that the K2 FIFO SharePoint app has been deployed to the site collection. If we go back to our K2 to our app catalog, then back into the K2 FIFO SharePoint app, scroll down, have a look at the manage app activations. We can see that the site collection in question has now been activated. And that's all there is to it.